G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for the round 19 tipping video. I know I've been patchy on this, but we are doing one today, so let's get around it. Round 18 was a tricky one. A couple of 50-50s went the wrong way. Um, it was a tough round. I got about six, and it said the app said outstanding tipping, which means that I'm guessing that was fairly good against the rest of the competition. I think I'm up to 123rd. Still gunning for that top 100 spot, uh, but it'll have to do for now. Moved up 24 spots actually this week. So yeah, I guess a uh, fairly reasonable round of tipping. I ended up changing my tip from West Coast to Hawthorne uh, when I saw Nat Nui and Riolio out. And yeah, I mean, we probably would have lost the game anyway. So maybe maybe those outs did me a favor in terms of the footy tipping. Got Fremantle wrong. I tipped Carlton to beat Geelong ambitiously. Got that one as wrong as well. Uh, but I did tip Essendon correctly to beat the Gold Coast Suns. So all in all, it was a tricky round and uh, I I guess that is uh, exemplified by the fact that the person who won the footy tipping comp this week was ESPN fan 1848 blah 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 a bunch of numbers uh, didn't get a perfect nine they got a per oh, eight out of nine and uh, the margin was five which was uh, still a really really good effort and the overall leader is still hen dog who got six correct this round to move up to 114 correct tips so well done hen dog and well done ESPN fan I've had a couple of good weeks of fantasy in a row uh, I think I got like 2400 this week which is uh, my best score for the year and uh, I think I got like 2350 last week 2340 so uh, going pretty well moved up into the top 100 finally that's that's the benchmark for me but the overall leader is James English with his team the Shuckers and tremendously um, you know consistent player with 2178 being his average so well done once again James I'm pleased to tell you guys that we're gonna have a fair bit of content coming out on the channel this week we did a podcast um, and we're gonna be splitting that podcast up into a, a variety of videos for you to watch more conveniently but uh, the full version of the podcast will be up on Spotify and all your audio platforms as well. So keep a lookout for that. And uh, thank you for the 19,000 subscribers. I believe we just trickled over that. Uh, it'd be great to see uh, anyone who's watching the content and enjoying it but hasn't subscribed. You'd be doing a big favor to me uh, if you did hit that button. I'm gonna take my hat off because it's getting warm in here. And speaking of things hotting up, uh, it's time to take a look at the ladder. We've got Geelong on top of the ladder ahead of Melbourne, Brisbane, and then Fremantle down in fourth following their loss. They have uh, they were equal top before and now they're a game behind. Collingwood up in fifth. And then uh, the top eight race there is getting real interesting with Richmond, the Bulldogs, and St Kilda all locked on nine wins there. And it looked for a little while that Richmond were clearly better size than both of those teams, but only 3% separates them and the Bulldogs at the moment, which is just wild. And uh, down the bottom of the ladder, you've got a pretty interesting wooden spoon race with just 3% uh, separating West Coast and North. I don't know. I think at the moment, I'm probably thinking North avoids the spoon based on their current form, but we'll get into this week's tips. Oh, sorry, I had to take my jumper off as well. Uh, something about content just warms me up. Uh, let's talk about the first game of the round. You've got Richmond and Fremantle. Richmond coming off a disappointing fortnight with losses to Gold Coast and North Melbourne. Uh, I know both of those sides are playing all right footy at the moment. Uh, North in particular, have had a really good fortnight. So a little bit unlucky, um, but the fade-outs are hurting them, particularly against Gold Coast. So uh, they come up against Fremantle, who have been up and down themselves. Seven-goal win against St Kilda in Melbourne at this very ground, uh, so that, that holds no fears for them. Uh, I think Richmond are a tougher opponent at the moment, uh, but although the Dockers just lost at home to Sydney. I... This is a tough one. I think there's no Lynch and no Dusty for this game. I think I'm going to go with Fremantle. I tips the Saints to beat them, and they proved me wrong. I'll say Fremantle. I think they're a better side. So form pending, they should win this by, yeah, two goals. Next, we have North and Hawthorne. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. So Hawthorne have just come off wins against West Coast and Adelaide. They uh, kind of butchered Adelaide a little bit. And against West Coast, it was a pretty good game, and Hawthorne were just better all day. So they're looking fairly stable over the last fortnight. And North Melbourne, by contrast, well, they're also stable, but they've been really bloody good. I'd, I'd say that they've been the better of the two teams when you consider they nearly beat Collingwood. And um, and then they did beat Richmond. So down in Bell Reeve, I know Hawthorne don't mind Tassie, but this ground in particular... Bell Reeve, I mean Blunston. This ground in particular, I'm actually thinking North win this one. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for a roughie here and say North upset the Hawks by ten points, and that may be enough to avoid the wooden spoon. Sydney versus Adelaide at the SCG. Uh, Sydney just um, coming off a good win against Fremantle in Perth, a very tough opponent, no doubt about that. Uh, so to get the, the four points, that's a big win in the context of their season. They currently sit sixth. And Adelaide just fading away a little bit. Um, they had that loss to Hawthorne. Then last week, they lost to Collingwood. Um, so not easy matchups when you consider Adelaide are currently the 16th ranked side. And this is a big, tall order for them. And I think there used to be this thing where they used to win in Sydney a bit, but 
Uh, surely Sydney are too good. So I'll say Sydney win this by 25, 26 points. Blowout. Here we go. We've got Port and Geelong at Adelaide Oval. Again, this is a tough round so far. Port Adelaide's last fortnight, they uh, they challenged Melbourne and uh, couldn't get over the line. They played all right. And the week before that, they uh, beat GWS, I think it was. Um, so, yeah, some relatively consistent form from Port Adelaide. They've been fairly stable since about round five um, without really ascending to be the quality that they were last year. And But even still, at home here against the top side, you'd give them a sneaky chance to, to lift, you know. And Geelong and have been playing so well for so long that they're due a loss. That being said, I think I will still tip the Cats, but Port Adelaide are in with a good chance here. I'll tip a good game where Geelong win by 14. Then we got the Q Clash. Uh, this one is potentially one of the best Q Clashes we've ever anticipated, uh, and that is because this is probably the best Gold Coast side we've ever seen, and um, one of the better Brisbane sides, certainly in the last 20 years, since about 04. You know, in recent times, Brisbane are expected to beat up on Gold Coast, and Gold Coast have been pretty damn good this year, falling short against Essendon, who are in good form at the moment, uh, beating Richmond the week before. It is a Gabba game. Um, I'm still going to tip Brisbane, but this could be actually a watchable Q clash. Like, it could be. And they, the Gold Coast Suns are only one win out of the eight, so they've still got plenty to play for. Uh, but you'd still go the Lions by, no, I don't know, I'd say five goals. Now, this one here is tricky because the Bulldogs have had so, such up and down form all year, but even the last two weeks, criticizing for an eight goal loss against uh, Sydney. And then they, you know, torched St Kilda for at least the first half and then uh, well, three quarters even. And then uh, couldn't, couldn't quite, you know, blow them out of the water. But yeah, still a solid win, you'd think, by their standards. They have the capability to beat Melbourne, who are a little vulnerable at the moment. They're not looking at top form, but I think it's only a matter of time. I think it was around this time last year, Melbourne started to kick back into gear, and I expect that that will happen this game as well. So I'm going to go bold and say the Demons actually win by 40 points here. Grand final rematch. Um, dogs aren't without their chances if, if the sluggish Melbourne turns up, but I reckon this is the weak Melbourne comeback. So 40 points. Carlton versus GWS at Docklands or Marble Stadium. It's got the old stadium names here for some reason, but we'll roll with it. Carlton's last two weeks, uh, they smashed West Coast here in Perth. I thought they played pretty well and were seriously challenged for about a quarter and a half there. And then uh, as soon as West Coast's resistance ended, they torched them like a good side would. And then last week, they lost to the latter ladies in Geelong, who are a uh, pretty damn good side at the moment. So hard to blame them for that. And uh, I know historically, I think GWS kind of had the wood on Carlton a little bit. I could be wrong on that, but I feel like uh, I saw on Blue or Broad's channel, they referenced some sort of GWS curse. Um, that being said, they're playing a bottom four GWS who have been fairly average going down by 40 points last week against the Brisbane Lions. So it would be a massive shock. And um, I think Carlton should should put them away fairly easily. I'll say 42 points. Collingwood versus Essendon at the MCG. This could be a good game. Two good sides on current form. I know Essendon currently sit 14th. So um, don't get me wrong. I, I'm well aware of where they sit. But this is an awkward time to get Essendon because they won four of their last five and some of them against good teams as well uh, or relatively good teams in St. Kilda, Sydney, um, and uh, someone else I'm forgetting. It obviously beat Gold Coast and someone else in the middle there. The Brisbane Lions, yes, <laughs> a big team to beat. So uh, Collingwood, in theory, is a gettable opponent um, who you know, had a pretty good win over Adelaide in Adelaide, a plucky opposition, and then uh, came from five goals down against North, who were playing well that game. Collingwood's form is, is indisputably very good over the last well, what, six or seven weeks. Uh, they've been good. In fact, they've been good all year. It's just that their patchiness has really dried up. But they're not invulnerable here. There is a chance that Essendon nabbed them. I'm still going to go the conservative tip, but this is a bad time to get Essendon, you know. I'd say Carl Collingwood win this by, let's call it seven points. I think this would be a ripper. Final game of the round, I think, is West Coast versus St. Kilda. St. Kilda grabbing for dear life their, their spot in the eight. Um, and if, I think if they win this game, they still won't be in the eight. Uh, West Coast, by contrast, on the live ladder here, need to win it to get off bottom spot. Um, with the injuries West Coast have at the moment, I'd love to be optimistic and say, um, we can do this, and, and part of that is because St Kilda, you know, dropped five of the last six, admittedly against top, tough opposition. Um, Ryder's going to be out, but they've still got Rowan Marshall, and the Eagles' leading ruck will be Bailey Williams, and I don't know, Josh Robin might be in the ruck this week. So if you give us back a few key players, 
Um, I'm sure we can make a game of this. Uh, I'm sure everyone can say that about their team, but we've still got a fair few injuries. And I don't think... I'll be, I'll be very surprised if we manage to topple St. Kilda here. So I'll say the Saints should win this by 25 points. Cool. That is a... Uh, just before I move on to the ladder, that is a juicy fixture for next round. Fremantle versus Melbourne. Uh, I think that's a Friday night game. Uh, but we'll move on to the ladder for now. Top four remains the same. No change there. In fact, the top six say... In fact, the top seven stays the same, I think, from that round. And Oh, never mind. St. Kilda did bob up into the eight. Um, my quick math was poor there. Uh, so, yeah, big game for them on Sunday against West Coast. We do have a new Wooden Spoon favorite, if my tips are correct this week, when North go ahead of West Coast, um, which sucks. Richmond down to ninth, Port Adelaide 11th, and the Bulldogs 10th. So, yeah, pretty stable in the bottom half of the ladder there, um, other than 8th and ninth spot and 17th and 18th. So that's it, guys. That is my tips for the round. Let me know in the comments what you think about this upcoming round. Always forget to do upset of the round and game of the round. So let's have a look. It's actually really tough to pick game of the round. There's Richmond and Fremantle. Then there's Port Adelaide and Geelong. Um, there's even the Bulldogs and Melbourne, which could be a good game, and Collingwood versus Essendon. I think the one I'm most intrigued by is Richmond Fremantle, to be completely honest with you. Uh, both sides, you know, really playing for their spot in either the four or the eight. And uh, the upset of the round, I would give to... Well, I suppose you could say North versus Hawthorne. I think West Coast are in with a shot of beating St Kilda, which is possibly more of an upset. I don't know. I guess that's subjective. I think North beating Hawthorne wouldn't be that much of a shock right now, whereas I think West Coast beating St Kilda would probably be more surprising to me. Um, so, yeah, I'll say, I'll say West Coast for upset of the round. But that'll do, guys. Thank you for watching this content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.